Hello friends, a knowledge of the LV systolic function is crucial in the understanding and management of unstable hemodynamics or a failing heart in the ICU. In the series of advanced critical care echocardiography, today we will discuss the evaluation of LV systolic functions. So let's begin. Various parameters are available to assess the LV systolic function such as the fractional shortening, fractional area change, ejection fraction, DP over DT max, stroke volume and eyeballing. So a lot of parameters are available to assess the LV systolic function but we are going to learn all these assessment methods one by one in this video. The fractional shortening is calculated by measuring the percent change in the LV cavity dimensions at the base with systolic contraction. Parasternal long axis view is obtained then M mode is pressed and the M mode line is kept along the mid cavity along the mid cavity of the left ventricle. Two measurements are taken left ventricle and diastolic uh, diameter and left ventricle and systolic diameters. The two measurements are taken and then this formula is applied to calculate fractional shortening. The value more than 28% are considered to be normal. Very similar to fractional shortening is the tick holes method which also incorporates the 2D measurements in M mode in parasternal short axis view. Left ventricle ejection fraction is calculated using tick holes formula. This formula is ultimately based on the linear dimensions of left ventricle in systole and diastole. Now there are few shortcomings in this method of assessment of left ventricular systolic function. These methods are actually inaccurate where, where there is a wall motion abnormalities are noted or where there is a poor image quality or if a mode orientation is not perpendicular to the LV cavity. Therefore, these methods are not mentioned in the current guidelines from American Society of Echocardiography. Therefore, a new method based on area measurement was developed. The fractional area change, which is a two-dimensional measure of LV global systolic function. It is seen at a level of papillary muscles in the parasternal short axis view and it is calculated as the difference in the end diastolic area and end systolic area divided by the end diastolic area. Okay, in the parasternal short axis view. The normal value is actually higher than 40%. And again, similar to previous method, it requires a good image quality for tracing of endocardial border. Hence, this method is highly operator dependent and great inter-observer variability exists. This method is also not recommended in the modern echocardiography. That's why the scientists came up with the idea of volume estimation. LV ejection fraction is the central measure of the LV systolic function. By definition, the ejection fraction is the percentage of end diastolic LV blood volume that is ejected out of the LV during systole. The ejection fraction is calculated by dividing the stroke volume by end diastolic volume. The stroke volume is the difference between end diastolic and end systolic volume. These volumes can be measured with better accuracy applying the Simpson method in apical 4 chamber and apical 2 chamber views. Normal LV ejection fraction is higher than 55%. A modified Simpson method, biplane method of risk, the first in apical four chamber view and systolic and end diastolic areas are calculated by area tracing of LV cavity. In second step, in apical two chamber view obtained and end systolic and end diastolic areas are calculated by area tracings of LV cavity. These areas are put together in the software integrated in the echocardiographic machine which gives the value of ejection fraction. So remember, a total of four measurements are taken in two different views, apical four chamber and apical two chamber views. ASC, that is American Society of Echocardiography, recommends this method for the measurement of LV ejection fraction despite various other shortcomings which this method still have, which can overestimate ejection fraction compared to the gold standard radionuclide ventilography or MRI. Expertise is required to obtain good views and hence to trace the endocardial contour properly. So this method again is highly operator dependent. The volume is a very good estimate of left ventricular systolic function as it represents the denominator of calculation of LV ejection fraction. The stroke volume is determined by the left ventricular outflow tract diameter multiplied by left ventricular outflow tract velocity time integral in centimeter. LVOT diameter is calculated in LV mid systole, freeze the view at mid systole and at the hinge of aortic valve leaflet measure the distance from inner edge to inner edge. Okay, from LVOT diameter, LVOT area is calculated using formula pi r square. Now LVOT diameter should be measured correctly as any inaccuracy in the diameter measurement will be squared. The VTI represents the total flow across the area 
of the sample volume in store and then pulse wave doppler sample volume cursor is placed at its center of lvot which will give the downward tracing of waveform and this waveform is traced and the software in echo machine will give you the vti value the normal lvot vti is 18 to 25 centimeter for vti measurement two or three cardiac cycles should be averaged for a patient in sinus rhythm and five to seven for a patient in atrial fibrillation a oh, very good but underutilized measure of lv systolic function is the dp over dt max which is the maximal rate of rise of lv systolic pressure which is parameter of myocardial isovolumetric contraction in short words the faster the left ventricle is able to build up the pressure the better its function is the rise in pressure can be captured by the mitral regurgitation profile the pulse wave doppler is kept over mitral wall negative reflection of mr jet is obtained on the screen the velocity is measured at two different time points one meter per second and three meter per second then we measure the time interval between these two time points these two velocities and put in the formula dp over dt is equal to 32 upon time which will give you the value of dp over dt which is normally about 1200 millimeter of mercury per second Main limitation of this method is that a good MR jet is required for the calculation of dp over dt and even a small difference in the time interval leads to large change. Now the last method which we are going to learn is the eyeballing which is very commonly used by intensivist and convenient method of estimating the left ventricular systolic function. It is based on the observation of the original myocardial movement. Each segment should be assessed in multiple views. Follow the scoring system for the visual assessment of wall motion abnormalities is normal movement, hyperkinetic, hypokinetic, akinetic, and dyskinetic. Okay, so there are five types of movement possible. So that's all for today. Thank you so much. Here I conclude the uh, video over on the LV systolic assessment methods, and we learn the evaluation of LV diastolic dysfunction in next video. Thank you so much.